Welcome to Galactic Historian. This is a series where I break down the lore of sci-fi universes. If you enjoy this, please like the video and be sure to leave any other questions you have in the comments below. Today, I will tell you another story, this time of a location you can find on the windswept sandy moon of Daymar, a wreck that has been decaying on the surface for almost a century. The tragedy of the Aegis Javelin, the UEES Flysa. Its story starts shortly after the discovery of the Stanton system in 2851. The UEE found the system occupied and paid a lot of money rooting out the squatters, smugglers, and pirates that had taken up residence in the system. They then paid even more money, terraforming the planets and building a large latticework of floating platforms into the clouds of Stanton II, modern-day Crusader, to act as a shipyard and base. By 2858, Admiral Pavlina Marlin was posted to command the base on the Gas Giant, a post most saw as plum, but she thought of as a waste of her time. She routinely expressed frustrations at the post, wanting instead to be posted near the Vandal Front. You see, her parents were survivors of the fall of Virgil in 2737, who raised her with tales of their harrowing escape from the alien horde. She kept a picture of her family's Virgil home on her desk, and whenever someone would ask about it, she would say it was long since burned, bombed, and churned up through a vandal harvester to fuel their war against us. Despite her ambition, she had never gotten the combat command she so desired, always being assigned to sleepy outposts and backwaters away from the fighting. You see, the High Command admired Admiral Marlin's ambition, but feared her brash nature was too much of a liability to be on the front lines. They hoped that years away from the front would calm her into being a more patient and cautious commander. Unfortunately, this would not be the case. She consistently put those under her command through war games, simulating everything from an outlaw blockade of a space station to a vandal attack from an unknown jump point. And after four years of hard work, she honed her small fleet into a formidable fighting force and feared she had done too good of a job and would never be allowed to leave the system as a result. However, that would change when a report in 2862 would cross her desk. Ever since the Stanton system was conquered by the UEE, there had been a freeze on any development of the system as the government worked out what to do with it. An economic recession had stifled ambitions for colonization, and the UEE was still in negotiations with the companies that would one day become the owners of the system. Until those details were worked out, the Senate did not want complications by allowing development to take place. However, since 2851, there had always been a small trickle of independent prospectors combing the system. The vast majority of them were illegal. But since most of them were small operations, the Navy usually looked the other way. That was until the report crossed the desk of Admiral Marlin in 2862. The report showed a massive complex mining operation with fleets of ships strip mining the moon that would become known as Daymar with impressive speed and skill. Fearing an inadequate response would further encourage this kind of operation to happen again, Admiral Marlin ordered a flight of fighters and the Aegis Javelin UES Flysa to the moon fast and hard stating their goal was to rattle their screws loose and shock them into immediate submission. The sight of a flight of Navy fighters and the massive hulk of a javelin bearing down on their operation with speed and force caused the miners to scatter to the winds. The fighters managed to chase down and disable all of the fleeing ships, save for one, which managed to make a break for the atmosphere. The javelin doggedly pursued the ship and lined up a shot to disable the small mining vessel as it broke atmosphere. However, the ship never made it out of Daymar. The mining vessel was long overdue for maintenance, and the panicked pilot was pushing the ship far harder than they should have. First, the components failed, and those failures caused an explosion, which then ignited the volatile ore on board. The shockwave hit the UES Flysa so fast the crew didn't have time to brace, Following the shockwave, debris of the mining ship rained down directly on the javelin. Believing that the explosion and the debris were a preemptive attack, Captain Chin Ormanson ordered a quick retreat, only to realize that two of the ship's main thrusters were damaged. The sudden attempt to change directions caused those thrusters to overload. What followed was a series of cascade failures and fires, 
which swept through the ship. Soon, the destroyer was tumbling in a death spiral towards the surface of the moon. The UES Flysa impacted hard as cascading explosions ripped through the hull, finally coming to rest with its bow hanging precariously off a ledge. All 65 crew members on board died, making it one of the worst naval crashes of the 29th century. Investigations after the incident concluded that the entire chain of events was far too unlikely to happen again. However, the blame for the entire event was placed squarely on the shoulders of Admiral Marlin. The report found her overly aggressive tactics and desire to prove herself was the catalyst for the whole incident. After the report, Admiral Marlin was finally transferred out of Stanton. However, not to where she wanted to go. Pushed to administrative duty on Killian until she was granted general discharge in 2868. The story of the crash has been lost to time, and few even remember the name Admiral Marlin or the UES Flysa. The Navy sent out reclamation teams to strip the ship of all valuable assets, but left the wreck on the moon, hoping to come back and retrieve it later. However, by 2865, the moon became property of Crusader Industries, and the Navy seemingly forgot that her story was even there. Today, few people visit the site, despite its historical significance and impressive views. Rumors are abound that outlaws often use it as a shelter, but other than that, the ship has slowly been consumed by the shifting sands of Daymar, another lost relic of a bygone era. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my patrons on screen now for helping me make this content. If you enjoy this, consider becoming a patron yourself. Just $5 a month can get you early access to videos and even a long requested podcast version of these videos for easier listening while driving or at work. Do you enjoy the story? Interested in hearing more tales from the verse? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, remember, Exhistoria ad Astra.